Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Cameron Vesey, as you may well know. You probably don't. Uh, it is uh, June 15th, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I am something of an untrusting motherfucker. Uh, call it abandonment issues, call it uh, a betrayal. Uh, I've gone through ego death more times than uh, Freud, uh, you know, did cocaine. <laughs> and uh, Starlink, I'm a huge Elon Musk fan. Uh, I'm also becoming a fan of Donald Trump, which I just don't, I just feel dirty every time I say that. And, and the uh, paranoia starts kicking in because everyone I've ever trusted has eventually let me down. Now, on that same token, I'm pretty sure anyone who's ever trusted me, I've probably let them down too. So it's a, it's a fair game. I'm not, I'm not trying to be judgmental on anybody, but um, I guess betrayal is the name of the game in life, right? Sadly enough. Um, of one form or another. So I start thinking about how Donald Trump could betray us all or something and, or, 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 you know, who knows, but something occurred to me, uh, that's hard to explain. So the problem with Starlink is you got all, we already got like 10,000 pieces of debris in the atmosphere. And a while back, cause I'm, I read on this shit. Uh, there was a, a paper, a study done, saying how a few few collisions uh, in our atmosphere of this space debris could create what would be called a uh, a cloud of metal, of debris, of shrapnel traveling at seventeen thousand miles per hour, uh, somewhere in that area, up to twenty five thousand miles per hour, uh, and so even the tiniest metal uh, object could uh, wreak havoc uh, on spacecraft launching uh, into space. Uh, even our International Space Station uh, has to maneuver uh, around some of this junk. There are a few countries and private businesses who are trying to establish themselves as junk cleaners, which is great. But then my mind got thinking really devious because I'm an evil person deep down inside. But right next to that evil person is a really wonderful person who, uh, you know, the line of uh, the line between good and evil runs down every heart. Um, what if Elon Musk? Okay, and I'm not saying this. I doubt this is true. It could be a Let's say you have plans on going to Mars, okay, and you want to establish a colony, a colony there first to, to create a, a new society. He is from South Africa, uh, apartheid, remember, okay, so I'm not saying that that affected him, but you have to take into consideration uh, when, when you're building an absolutely uh, mythical conspiracy theory uh, for someone who's done nothing but great things. Uh, I'm not sure PayPal was the greatest thing. It was a money maker. Uh, it helped the industry, but it was also an engine of profit. So, megalomania. If I was going to go to Mars and establish the, uh, let's call it a Nazi uh, colony, and I didn't want the competition of other countries and state, one of the easiest things to do would be to establish the colony on Mars and then burst a bunch of metallic objects in our atmosphere, which would decimate the ability of Earth to send vehicles into the atmosphere for decades. Now, while Earth is uh, space-locked, kind of landlocked, space-locked, uh, Let's say it would take 20 to 30 years, uh, 
So that's the thing. Is it's, uh, the, the study I showed, I read, said it would be that hard accidentally to have a bunch of debris uh, in our atmosphere uh, make it so we couldn't travel to space. We would lock ourselves in through our, you know, our uh, our tendency to be, you know, leave our for being, leaving our trash around. So if I was going to go to Mars and I wanted to establish a colony uh, without the interference of Earth, but the fuck, I mean, and I don't really blame the motherfucker, right? Because uh, it, it, I'm, you know, well, Starlink, twelve thousand satellites. Floating around. Already it has discussions about great difficulties. But what if they had a secondary mission? Alright? So you, you, you deploy 12,000 uh, satellites on your way over a decade or two while you're establishing a Mars base. And then once you're established, they start colliding into each other. And now, Earth is stuck in Earth, and you and your perfect colony can now claim claim uh, rights to the rest of the solar system, the asteroid belt, you know, uh, terraform the other, whatever. You're now no longer under the. Uh, you don't have to worry about attacks from governments and moralists. And people, uh, 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 diverse cultures, which always get tribal, end up warring. You know, it's it, in a sense, it, I can easily see it saying, "Look, space war never war. War is bad. Space war would be even worse. Uh, for the betterment of humanity, I'm going to create a perfect society on Mars and landlock or space lock." Uh, Dumbass earthlings on Earth, while I create this empire outside of Earth, so that uh, moralists and, and 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 religious and all these things can't interfere with my great grand plan of saving humanity, so we can get to the stars and populate the universe. You don't think Elon Musk could? Dream something like that up if we take, if we assume that he may have uh, plans that might where the means look evil but the ends uh, justifiable. Well, these these starlings could be actually weaponized to space lock us. While Elon and his crew uh, establishes colonies on Mars, establishes uh, a, a society uh, that is so entrenched by the time uh, Earthlings do open up the door, he's like, whoa, you now have to have a bus pass, uh, a green card to come off Earth, and uh, we're going to let you know who can do that. So I say, Elon, I'm in. I want to go. Let's do this.